Okay, so yeah, I guess we are ready to start. So hello everyone and thanks for joining us today at this webinar. Uh, my name is Dimitri and I'm product manager at UI Bakery. And well, today we will be building a customer support dashboard uh, based on MySQL. And of course, we will be doing it in UI Bakery. Um, yeah, we will be recording. So we are recording this webinar so that we will send you a link uh, with a recording. And um, yeah, I guess we are ready to start. So please meet Nick. Nick is a software architect uh, at UI Bakery team. Um, yeah, so Nick, um, it's your turn. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Dimitri. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Nick. I'm a software architect for the UI Bakery, and now um, I'll try to show you how to build such a customer dashboard. Okay, so it will consist of the following components. Uh, first of all, is a customer table that loads data from the MySQL database and just displays it as a neat format at a table, and uh, customer form that allows you to edit some customer data here. So for instance, um, I'm selecting a row in the customer table, for instance, the first row with the name Nick, and so I just wanna change the name here, but let's call this customer Dimitri. Now I can press a submit and it will update the data and update it inside the table. Mm -hmm. And also it's updated uh, at a database. Also, here is orders table. Orders are related to some specific customers. So when I'm clicking on different rows in the customers table, I'm just reloading data from the database and just getting orders related to the selected customer. And finally, here is a bit of uh, like reporting at the bottom of the page like uh, the revenue per person table that will be built with a custom uh, SQL query and uh, need chart that displays uh, how much each uh, our customer spends on uh, our website, okay? Okay, so let's go to the UI Bakery and uh, let's go from the, let's create the project from scratch, okay? So let's say I'm building a customer dashboard here Okay, I'm creating the page and using a plain blank template for that purpose. <clears throat> okay, and it's created. Now I'm going to the data sources management tool. Mm, I'll remove the default data source here and just, um, let's say, connect uh, a MySQL database here. Yep, so uh, UI Bakery allows us to connect different data sources here, like Google Sheet, MySQL, Postgre, HTTP, Salesforce, Force, but here I'm using MySQL database, okay? So let's call it customers. And now I add and enter my credentials to my database. Um, and uh, let's see, here's a host, here's a username, I'm inserting my password here and a database name. Okay. Now I can press test connection and make sure that I can connect to the database so my user has all the required permissions and so forth. So I'm just connecting the database to the UI Bakery. So here is my connected data source. It's my MySQL database. And here we are loaded all the tables from these uh, database. Okay, so we have customers, employees, offices, and other tables here. And here at the right side of the screen, you can take a look and see like uh, columns from this selected table. Okay, so for instance, my customers table has customer number, customer name, some contacts, uh, some uh, address uh, columns, and so forth. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to the builder and create uh, the first customer table. To do so, first of all, I'm opening the actions pane. What's going on here? Let me delete the default action. So here in UI Bakery, to load and display some data, first of all, uh, you have to create an action that will load data from the database. Okay, 
So I'm creating a new action that will load table okay, uh, from the data source. Here I have a customer's data source that's already predefined here. And uh, resource, it's a table from the MySQL database, from my customer's database. So I'm choosing customers here. Okay, so this action will load all the data from the customer's table, from the customer's database. <clears throat> Let's just press run action and take a look. How does it work? Here is the result type. Uh, I have all the data loaded inside the system. Okay, so for instance, this record consists of uh, all the columns that I've just showed you before. Okay, now when we've loaded all the data inside the system, we just need to add a table on the screen. Okay, so I'm just opening components. Here's a table, I'm just dragging it on the screen. And all the data is uh, automatically connected to the section that loads data. And my table already understands the structure of this data and loaded everything. Okay, let's make it a bit fancier and hide some not interesting for us columns. So let's say it will be customer name, city, and for instance, credit limit. Yeah, okay. So now we have a neat table that shows the data from MySQL database. Cool. Now let's go and create a form here. So here is the form. My form will be just um, listening for selected roles in the customer table and displaying data from it and allows us to edit this data. Okay, so to do so, first of all, I just uh, need to connect my form to the selected row of the customer's table. Okay, so I'm just selecting a selected uh, customer's table selected row here, and all the data is populated here, and also structure of the form is created. Again, I'm just removing useless lines here. Let's say I want to edit these lines and make it a bit fancier. So let's say in one column. Okay. Um, now I have a form that will uh, populate its uh, form fields with the data from the selected line in the customer's table. Okay, so I'm selected lines and it works. Great. The next step is to create an action that will be updating data inside the database when I'm editing something and pressing a submit button, okay? So to do so, I'm selecting a form again, going to the actions tab, and here I have different triggers, okay? On submit trigger is required for me now, okay? And I have no action to update data right now, so I'm pressing just add new action button. Okay, new action is created here, and I can see that I just wanna update a row in my customer's MySQL database, in my customer's table. So what do I wanna update here? So I wanna select all the records uh, with a customer name. Okay, so here the customer name is selected. Uh, with the customer name, where this customer name number is equal to the smart table selected row um, customer number. So here we'll get a customer number of the selected customer in the customer's table. Okay. When we selected required customers, it's time to put some data inside these records. So I would say I'll just put the data from the form, all the data from the form. And this data will be merged inside the row um, in the customer's table in MySQL database. Okay, and after that, when this record will be updated, I just wanna reload data from the database just to make sure that my customer's table is updated. So it will be up to date with updated data from the customer form. To do so, I'm just choosing a uh, execute action here, and I'll be executing load customers action. So when the form is submitted, we are updating the row in the database and reloading the data from the database inside the table. Let's take a look at how does it work. 
let me hide it. Okay, here are customers. So you can choose a customer here. And let's say I want to just change its name to my name. So now I'm Nick here. I'm pressing the submit button. And it's updated here and updated inside the database and updated inside the table. Great. So maybe anybody have any questions at this stage? Okay, great. Thanks. You know, Nick, maybe just worth mentioning a little bit more details on how the update action works. Just a couple of notes. If you open the action panel. Yeah, sure. And we take sure. a look at the update customers action. Yep, we are here at update customers action. Yeah, so I just wanted to, you know, like to stress out that um, this particular step, it updates a row in a database and it updates it by the rule that we specify in the first step. So, and we update the customer by the customer number, which is currently selected in our table. And as an update, we send the whole form object. So the record details is references the whole uh, form object. So we can not only update the customer name, but also the rest of the fields. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, just so, <clears throat> oh, let me show you how it works. Oh. So here in the table, I'm displaying only the customer name. So let's just get it back. For instance, here we have a state uh, field. So let's get back state here and update another field. For instance, I'm choosing, selecting a, um, another record with the NV state. And let's say it will be in New York state here and I'm pressing the submit and it will be updated inside the table, okay? Yeah, so you can definitely update anything inside your MySQL database using form and update action from here, okay? Okay, great. <clears throat> so let's move, move on and uh, create a master detail table. So it will be orders table. And this table, as I showed you before, will display as ordered uh, related to the selected customer in the customer's table. Okay. To do so, let's start first of all by creating an action that will load such data. Okay. So first of all, I'm creating a load table action here. I'm using again a customer's data source, but now we need another resource here. We'll use orders. We can take a look how does it work. So I'm pressing run. And here I have multiple different orders loaded from the database. But now we don't need to load all orders. We need to filter them at the database. So we're doing the following stuff. We, are, we will select all the orders from the database where customer number is equal to the customer number of the selected customer in the customer's table, okay? So I'm selecting a row. In the selected row, we have a customer number. And then we're querying all the orders for that customer. Let's take a look how this works. But first of all, let me name it properly. Okay, so it's configured. And now I just need to add a table below. Um, I'll make it a bit wider and hide some boring, useless information. Okay. And now, when I'm selecting a different, oh, pardon me, <laughs> I forgot about the most important part here. So this action exists, but we had to trigger it somehow, okay? Uh, now we can just run action and it will load the data select, um, related to the selected customer. But we need to re-trigger that action each time when the user selects a row in our customer's table. This one selects a customer's table, going to the actions tab here. 
and choosing a on row select trigger. And here I'll choose a load orders action. Okay, so it will be triggered each time when I'm selecting a new row at a customer's table. So let's take a look how does it work. I'm selecting a new customer, and yeah, it reloads the data and it works. Great. Okay, cool. Now we have a pretty simple customer support customer dashboard where you can take a look at all your customers, where you can update some information related to your customers, and also where you can load related data to your customers and display it as a separate table. And that's the time to build a, something more complex here, Abba. So as I showed you before, uh, I just want to add a table that will display us uh, more complex data. Just let me return here. So here we will load a revenue per person table, but all this data is not in one table in my database. So customer name lays in the customer table, orders number is just a um, grouping of multiple different orders from the orders table and revenue per person information resides in the order detail table. So we need to build uh, something like a complex query to load this data. So let me show you how does it work in UI Bakery. So first of all, I'm creating a new action. Let's say it will be load orders um, per person, okay? But now I will not use predefined actions like load table or update something. I'll use a more low level, but a more agile approach here. I'll use a custom SQL query here. Okay. So again, here I'm choosing a customer's data source and add a uh, an SQL query. It will be, I um, just prepared it. So I'll just copy paste it. So what it does. Don't be afraid, it's not uh, very big. <laughs> In fact, it's very simple. So it just uh, loads all the data from customers, joins orders, and uh, to orders, it joins orders details. And then we we'll just group all orders by the customer, okay? And then just find some information. So we'll uh, say that we need a customer name in the results data set. We'll count the number of orders and let's say that will be our orders number. And finally, we'll make a sum of different uh, prices of different orders. So we'll be able to take a look at the sum of all prices our customer paid for all his orders. Okay, and it will be a revenue per person call. Let's run it. Take a look what's going on here. So first of all, here's the result. For instance, the first customer, Nick, is, yeah, so his name is Nick. He ordered uh, something seven times from us and uh, he paid 600 bucks for us. Okay, not bad. Let's build a table on top of that. So uh, I'll just add a table here. Okay. A bit of a mess. Okay, so I'll return the orders table here. Here's a new table with a revenue per person. Okay, I'll call it revenue per person table. Okay, great. I'll make it a bit thinner. And here at the right, I just want to add a chart that will represent the same data, but in a different format. Okay, so I'll put a chart here. Okay, and here is a chart. Again, charts as data, they are by default loads all the data from the selected action here. Okay, and that's why all my charts and tables are beautiful by default and uh, display data by default, just because I have a selected action here. Okay, let's hide, me hide it. Okay, so here we have a chart. First of all, what I want to do here, I want to say that, uh, let's say it will be a bar chart. You can create a line chart, pie chart, donut chart, bar chart here in your bakery. 
Okay, so it will be a bar chart. And then I just want to call it, uh, let's see, per oh, revenue per person chart. And let's say it will be a green. And uh, we will display names of our customers on the X line. And let's see, uh, we don't need orders number here. We'll use uh, revenue per person at the Y axis. Okay, and here's a chart. Okay, so let's take a look on what we did here. Let's press preview, hide this bar. So what we got? We got a customer's table that loads the data from my MySQL database and displays it in a pretty neat format. So I have pages here, everything can be configured and it's, frankly speaking, from my point of view, it looks like nice. And when I'm selecting a row, all the data from this customer is populated inside the customer form where I can uh, update it and change customer name, let's say, and change um, the state. Let's say it will be demo. Um, <clears throat> Also, when I'm selecting a different row in the customer table, my orders table is just reloaded and displays all the orders related to the selected customer. Okay. Now, finally, here at the bottom, I have, from speaking, small report, let's say, uh, that displays us uh, how many orders each customer built and how many bucks it gave us. And here we can see exactly the same information, but in a pretty neat format using chart view. Okay. Frankly speaking, um, I bet in general, that's it. Guys, I just wanna have your questions regarding the stuff I've just built. So you, are you interested in something in a bit more detail? Yeah, so if you, uh, first of all, makes thanks, thanks a lot for the presentation. And uh, so, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, just type them in, in the chat or you can raise, you know, there is a raise hand button so that we can mute you. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks, Artem. <laughs> yeah, I guess while we're waiting for some questions, we can also say that um, as a result, uh, you can share this app in the sharing menu at the bottom of the screen. Oh, for are you thinking about sharing? Yes, sharing. Yes. Okay, the, the can, yeah. Yeah. So this one, and that you can invite your end users. They will be able to create their accounts and to access the application. So the process, what I'm saying is a process of delivering this application to your end users is very simple and straightforward, and you don't need to worry about uh, deployments environment setup, infrastructure, hosting and stuff like that. So it's all covered and handled by your bakery. Yeah, and I just want to add that uh, publishing is very first operation. So if I just change something, let's see, I just want to make uh, this chart, not a bar chart, you can see it will be plain line chart. So another view, I'm just pressing sharing, pressing publish, few seconds, reload in the page, and it works. So publishing is done in just in a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, and similarly, um, yeah, so it, well, what I wanted to say is, it, as you can see, if your use case is straightforward and more or less standard, your baker tries to, to understand what you're building and uh, to uh, configure all of the components uh, to look 
beautiful and functional by default. So all of the types, all of the columns are there by default and you don't need to spend your time replicating your database structure inside of UI Bakery to show it in the interface. Also at the same time, you can go into the column settings and if you and configure it as well, basically as you need to, as you need it to be. So you can change, if we, if we go into some column, there are various types. We can say it's a currency or a link or a Boolean field. And uh, yeah, so add, adding a currency sign or changing a date uh, format is just a matter of a couple of clicks. And again, at the same time, if you have more non-standard use case, you can switch back to SQL and make a query. You can make a REST query, HTTP query to some API. You can add some JavaScript code to format the data, uh, to calculate stuff, or just make some transformation to your data. And even write a custom component uh, in jQuery or React or just plain JavaScript. So yeah, Bakery not um, providing you all this stuff out of the box. At the same time, it does not limit you uh, and allows you some you know, space to um, custom configuration. Um, yeah, and as you can see, it just takes like uh, 20 minutes to, to build this dashboard. Uh, 